Welcome back to another video. Uh, I know I typically don't do ride reviews, but given the recency and the interest in Rise of Icarus, I figured I would give a review of my experience on all five slides on the tower. Now, overall, the entire attraction looks very nice. They picked a great color scheme for the ride. It really looks like a sunset. Um, with the deep orange up top, the yellows in the middle, and then the blues and greens near the bottom. The entire ride looks spectacular, and the entire area is used concrete, so it looks nice, new, fresh. Really just overall a really great job in terms of presentation. The tower itself has two entrances, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left is used for the fall, which is the America's tallest water slide and the staircase on the right is for the mid platform with the other four slides. The tower itself is very comfortable to stand on. It wasn't a very warm day when we went. However, the material for the stairs is like that fake wood stuff, um, which should stay pretty cool and won't give you splinters like wood and won't get super, super hot like water might get. Getting up to the top here is really a great vantage point they could have put an observation deck on there and just sold tickets to get to the top. Uh, it really shows kind of how weird the Dells are, where it's just a little bit of commercialism in the middle of the Wisconsin forest surrounded by the hills. Um, it's a really neat view. You can see a great view of Hades. You can see a great view of the rest of the water park and the indoor water park and Medusa. And you could even catch a glimpse of the wilderness and Noah's Ark off in the trees. The main thing that I wanted to talk about, obviously, is the slides. Now, none of these slides are drop pod slides, and that's a disappointment for some. But I really don't like the anticipation feeling, either for drop towers or for drop pod slides. So this bug is indeed a feature for me. I love that you can just push yourself off at your own pace and just get going instead of, uh, you know, waiting and waiting and waiting until maybe it'll drop. The Fall, really overall a fantastic ride. It's not one of, it's not my favorite slide on the tower, but it is still in my top for all of the body slides that I've ever done. Um, generally, I enjoy tube slides better. I just enjoy the comfort of the experience and you can get a little bit more wild and a little bit more length. Um, but this slide tower really shows that body slides can both have insane length and pretty intense features while still being smooth. Now, there are two comfort issues that I identified. They may not, may or may not affect you, um, but we'll talk about those a little bit later. Getting into the fall, which is the, this tall orange slide, uh, it's a really interesting experience. It's not the most insane experience it's not just like pure thrill but it, what it really feels like to me is the helix finale on the beast it's just a spiral that starts off strong and then just keeps going and going and going and going it just lasts forever and during the entire time the g's just keep increasing and then at the end you end with a really nice splashdown Overall, the slide itself is really, really smooth. All of the tube sections joints are grouted, so they're really, really smooth on your back. The only point of discomfort while going down the tube, other than mild claustrophobia after being stuck in the tube for that long, is uh, I weigh a little bit more than I should at this point, and at about 230 pounds, and I was going a little bit faster than most other people, which meant that I was riding up on the wall a little bit higher, and the problem with that is the fact that when you ride up higher on the wall, the wall is less lubricated. The, the water will obviously lubricate the tube as it goes down, but if it doesn't, it won't get as high on the wall as you will. So there will be a little bit of like, it's kind of a rub burn sensation on your back. Now, I'd say that this slide is still far more comfortable than, like, Scorpion Tail, which puts two grooves in your back. But certainly by the end, especially with the length of this particular slide, it can get mildly irritating. Now, the increased friction thing isn't just a problem that I've had with this whitewater slide. Actually, Tsunami Surge at Great America also has had this same issue. I had ridden earlier in the day by myself, and I the size of the tube weren't 
very well lubricated yet, and I ended up going getting a very, very slow ride. The good part about a water coaster is that you're riding in a tube, so all that scraping doesn't cause discomfort. It just makes the ride worse. Uh, in this case, it made the ride slightly worse, but overall it wasn't too bad. Now, if they could retrofit both of these slides with little sprayers that would get that side of the wall wet, um, that would be incredible. I certainly don't expect it to happen because that wouldn't be a cheap operation at all. However, that is really kind of the my only gripe with this whole experience. The good part is that if you have someone heavier go down in front of you or you ride near the end of the day where they've been cycling a lot, it should be lubricated well enough that should, this shouldn't really be a problem. And if you don't weigh a lot, if you're shorter and just thinner in general, uh, you should avoid this issue altogether. Overall, the ride experience starts with a little bit of a steeper section and then like kind of a slow middle, slower middle section. It's still pretty fast. Um, but near the end is where the speed really kicks up, the G's really pick up, and that final turn tosses you around in a very good way, and then you get chucked into the uh, run-out trough at the end of the water slide. This is really my only other complaint with the ride, uh, is the splashdown. I don't find these to be very comfortable, comfortable on any body slide. I would rather be chucked into a pool. However, I would say that this is the smoothest that I've ever experienced. Obviously, you hit this at a pretty high rate of speed, and... I didn't feel as much discomfort as I usually do, but it perfect it definitely wasn't a perfectly soft landing. That's kind of just due to my weight. I end up skipping over the top of the water instead of sinking into it, and that can end up being quite uncomfortable. But overall, given the inherent design flaw of this type of ride, I still think it's about as smooth as it could get. I'd love for Whitewater or Pro Slide or someone else to come up with a better run out that's a little bit more comfortable while still slowing you down at a reasonable rate. But I'm not sure if that incentive is really there because for most people, this isn't really a problem. Overall, yeah, I really enjoyed the fall. I think it's a great experience, but kind of like the coaster that I referred to earlier, the Beast, it's not my favorite ride at the park and it's not my favorite ride at, on this tower even. So let's move down to the middle platform and talk about those four slides. The four slides aren't really well labeled uh, yet in terms of which is which, but if you look on the middle platform all the way to the left, this light teal one, this is called the Journey. This is probably the tamest water slide on the tower. However, it is still not a family ride. Unlike the other four slides, it doesn't have an initial steeper section. It just kind of stays at the same angle the entire time. However, what it does do is it winds back and forth. So you end up getting a longer, more dynamic ride than the fall since you get to uh, turn in both directions. And I, uh, the favorite part for me was actually the final tight turn. That turn was very tight and by that point I had picked up a decent amount of speed to get a really great amount of G's. While this slide might technically be my least favorite on the tower, it's still a very good slide and I would totally lap this any day. Moving on to the ride next to this, this is the drop. This is a very simple, straightforward uh, slide compared to the rest of them. It's just a drop. Now, the, I've sit, ridden similar rides like this, like the point and a return at Noah's Ark and the two speed slides at Hurricane Harbor Rockford. And while they look very similar, I found this one to be vastly improved in terms of the experience. There's a little bit of a run up to the drop on this one compared to the other two. The other two, you just kind of go straight into the drop. This one, you get you know, maybe five to 10 feet of speed buildup before you hit the drop, which really increases the amount of air time that you get. You don't lift out of the trough, of course, but you certainly feel the air time, like some floater air time as you go down. And the other part about this uh, water slide is that it's very steep. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what the angle is on this, but it's probably the steepest that I've ridden. And that steepness really leads to that increased sense of air time as well. And then the nice part about it is obviously you pick up a pretty big head of speed and I don't love the run out when you hit the water that fast. However, the tube joints on this are still very smooth and the run out is as smooth as it could be. So overall, a very comfortable and very thrilling experience. I'd say it's a short but sweet ride, something like Max Force. It's a great ride. I'd say it's 
number two on the tower for me with the fall being number three. Next to that slide is the Dark Teal Voyage. Voyage and the slide next to it, the flight, are both very similar in that they're kind of a combination of the first two slides that I mentioned on this middle platform. They start with a bit of a steeper drop and then they go into two twisty turns. Both of these slides are very nice, but I found that they had a very different experience between the two. The Voyage just seemed to slow down a lot faster, and that first drop was really great, but the turns following were just kind of meh. It was still a fun experience, and I'd still put it at number four above uh, the journey just for that first drop, but it's certainly not a, a standout slide like the slide next to it. The slide next to it, uh, the flight, has a very, very similar layout to the voyage where it has a drop and then two turns but something about this ran way better for me i ended up getting the same amount of air time with that same great drop to start but then the following two turns i just felt like i held my speed a lot better so i ended up getting a lot more intense g's and i the transition in between the turns was a lot more whippy so i got that insane first start and then that intensity intensity stayed up i got a lot of positive g-forces, I got a lot of whip, and I got a lot of airtime. And putting all three of those together on an ultra smooth body slide is just a dream come true. My favorite body slides before this were those kind of older style slides that have the big turns, or that have the sharp turns, but um, the continuous ride trough that so it doesn't have the track joints. But those never have like a big drop to start off. And this really feels like a next generation of that. And overall, this was my favorite slide on the tower, and I think it's my favorite body slide in general. That might be an unpopular opinion um, because of my dislike of trapdoor slides. And to be honest, I haven't been on as many water slides as I have coasters for sure. But this is probably my favorite body slide out there. I can't think of one that I'd actually enjoy better. Overall, a fantastic experience, and... You know, if you come out to the park and you only have time to ride two of the slides, the first slide definitely has to be the fall, just for the insanity and the crazy stats of it. But if you only have time to ride one of the ones on the middle platform, definitely ride the flight. Overall, yeah, this was a fantastic addition for a park that really needed it. This entire project only cost them $8 million. And, you know, $8 million is a lot of money, but their slide wheel expansion... Uh, and adding on to the indoor water park was $22 million. So the amount of slides that they got for this is an insane. It, it really replaces a hole in the lineup that uh, was created when the rest of the speed slides were taken out a couple of years ago. I really, I really hope this momentum keeps going for the park. Starting with the, the bathing pool and then Medusa... And then now this slide tower. I really hope they keep adding more and more consistent additions. And hopefully they can improve some of their safety practices on their dry rides. And kind of turn this place into a more upscale and insane resort. Overall, yeah, I'd totally recommend coming out and trying these slides. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.